Hi and welcome back to the next video. This is video 11 and this time we will implement a real-time user search with filter and pagination. So in the last video we made the backend part of this so you are able now to type in a username and send it with a query parameter to the backend and also with pagination options and then you will get returned the list of users that are matching the username that you sent there. And uh, video before we were already implementing the data table and now we will add the search and the filter function to this data table in the front end. So the video structure is as always, we will have a look at the video outcome, then we write or look at the user story for this, and at the end we will implement the user story and close it then. So this is what we are building, we already have our data table from the last videos, that is displaying all our users where we can paginate, so server-side pagination. And now we can also search for a username. And so, for example, if I type in A, and we will just get shown users that have an A in their username. We can also say we want to have the first five displayed and query then the next page or page paginate to the next page. Then you see we have the next three users displayed that are having an A in their username. You can also, for example, type in a full name. And then we will just get return this, or if I go for one, then I will just have returned those two, or for 11, then just one. Let's have a look at the next story. So here we are in video 11, and we want to filter and paginate by username with Angular material. So as a user, I want to be able to filter the table by typing in a username, so it's easier to find the user that I'm searching for. And the acceptance criteria are um, an input field that sends a request with the username that is searched for every time we press a key. So it's a real-time search. So every time I type something in, I will get displayed all the users that are found. So that are matching the username that I typed in. And then also the paginate buttons from our table should still work and should paginate to the next page if there are multiple um, users returned that don't fit in one page. And um, the table should always display the create data. So always the data that I typed in the input. So we can move this to doing and start with coding. So let's start by switching our branch. So you can see here we are on our branch develop if we type in git status. And so we can clear this and then we can switch to our new feature branch. So we can say git flow feature start and then we just name it. So we say it's video 11. And then we branch up from develop. So we have a new branch feature video 11 that was created based on develop. So we clear this, then we can run our front end with ng serve and we can open another shell Oops, another shell and go into our back end and start this also and then we can have a quick look what we will do so we have here our postman request that was what we were doing in the last video so now we have here our parameter username so if I query this username, you will see I get just the users returned that match this pattern here. So if I send this, you see, and if I would, for example, hit this with uh, Tom, then I would just get returned all the users with Thomas. And you see there are items or total items for, so I could go on the first page or on the next page, I would get the next user, you see here. So all four users then. So I could navigate with this pages. So to implement this, we first have to go into our user service. Um, in the front end, of course. So we go into here. And then we have here just our find all method. So here we need another one that we can call paginate by name. And here we will return also an observable of type user data. And we have the same inputs as here, but also the username. And this is of type string. And then we have our parameters. So this is completely the same. But now we are adding here our parameter username. So we change this, this is also already a string, and then we can just send the same 
request against our backend because we are here appending all the parameters. So what is important here, if we later um, add this in our component, then if we initialize or if we go on our page, we will use this here to find all our user data. And as you see in our backend, or as we did in the last video, you see in our controller, if the username is not specified, then we will just query or paginate through all users that are there. But if, so if this is null, but if there is a username, then we go in our else case, and then we will paginate by username also. So if we hit this here, then we will also paginate by username. So if we later call or open our component or in the browser, we will first fetch our data with this. And then if we uh, type in our, the username that we are searching for, we will hit this endpoint here. And we will also hit this if we paginate through it with uh, the buttons at the bottom. So for this, now we need to adhere our uh, input in our HTML. So we can do this above our table. And we can just say this is also a net form field. We have already imported everything. So because we need it also here. And we can give this a mat label and we can label it with filter by username so this is um, displayed above and then we can use a normal input field and can say this is of type mat input so material and this will be of type text and now we can make um, two-way data binding with angular so as soon as we type in something here, then our value in the component gets uh, changed, and if we change it here, then this also changes, so it's in both ways. And we can just name this uh, filter value, for example, or whatever we like. And we can also give this or bind this to input, so every time we hit a key, so input, we will hit our method find by name and what we will insert is our filter value and then we can also give it a placeholder so like where is it I thought we had it here somewhere but just a placeholder that is displayed uh, if you type in nothing so we can say search username Then we can go into our component and add this value here. So we named it filter value. And this is a string and initialize it with null. And this can stay the same. And now we have here our init data source. And you see we are hitting our normal uh, function. We want to have the first page return with 10 users. So we can also remove this tab here. And this can stay the same. But if we hit here, we paginate change. Or well, let's first implement the find by name. So everything works. Then we can test the first thing. And say here we have our username string. So this is the value that we are getting here. So this value is our username. Then we can just say this dot user service dot paginate by name we insert the first page, so we need a zero. Because we don't want to skip users, you have to go into the last video to where this is um, explained. But basically, in uh, Nest.js, so in our backend, we can see here, we will skip some values so for paginating. So if we want to have the first page, then we need a zero, because then we have here page zero multiplied by limit, so it's always zero. So we don't skip the first values. And then we want to have a size of 10. And of course our username. And then we can pipe it. We can map what we are getting. So we get user data from type user data. And return or set this to our data source. So our data source is then the user data. And then we just need to subscribe to it because it's an observable.
So this should work now. So we can go into our browser and we can say localhost 4200 and go to our users page and wait till the users are here. And then we now tap Thomas, you see we hit the endpoint because something changed is here. But this is not as we wanted. So we have to look what have we probably done wrong. Let's see. So let's go into our user service here in the front end. We are going to this. We go paginate by name. Um, Let's go into our backend and just look what we are getting. So if we hit this now, we should log it out here. So you see this is empty. And then the question is why? So let's see if we have the correct value here. So let's see. So you see we have here a null value, so this is not good. So probably we did something wrong here. Here, you see here, this is uh, Needs to be named ng model. With the data binding, and if we hit it now, you see now it's working. So we have it here returned, and every time we hit it, we're making the request to our backend. So, and the next thing that we want to do is we want to add the pagination. So for example, if we search a user with name A, then we could say we want to have five users. Then if we paginate, we want not these users here, but also filtered by username. So because right now we are just hitting this here without the username, so we have to here change this up a bit. So what we can do now, <clears throat> we can go with if this filter value, so we can get this value here because it's way data binding, it will always have the same value as in our um, HTML. And we can just say if this is null, and this means here, if it's null or undefined, then we can just say um, that we want to execute this, because if there's no username, we want to make our normal request. And so we have to make page plus one, so it's explained in the two videos before, because our normal um, route or our normal endpoint is waiting for first page, because this page zero won't return anything. And so in our else case, so if there is a filter value, then we can just say this.userservice.paginate by name. And now we insert the page, we insert the size and the filter value. And then we can just pipe it, map our outcome, so the user data. And as before, we set our data source to the user data. And we name now need to subscribe to it. And now we can remove here our console logs because this is working. Now we can see if I type in uh, booth A for example, or we have to wait till this is up again. So if we type in with A and we filter all names with A, so you see we have now eight items with name A, so 
if I would, we have here five, you see ID two, three, six, seven, nine. So if you go to the next page, there should be another three users. And you see we have now ID 10, 11, 18, and all have at least one A or more in their username. So the paginating is working. So we can go through this. We can filter by username and can just use it. And why this is working is because, as we see here in our uh, backend, you can see if we have no username, then we use our package that we um, imported. And this always needs to have the page uh, one. But if we make our query against our own method, we always um, need the real page from Angular, so zero, one, or two, and we will start by zero. So if you want to know more about this, then go to the last video, video 10 of this block project, and then you can see it. So now let's finish this up. Close everything. And now we can just commit our changes. And we can say video 11, edit filtering by username and with pagination to our front end. And we can push this to our branch. And also merge, then you see we're pushing this, then we can say also git flow feature finish and finish this feature up and merge it so back in our develop branch. Let's wait a bit till this is done. And then we can just push our develop branch. So in our GitLab repository, everything is up to date. And now we can have a quick check against our story if everything is done correctly. So we have an input field with a request that sends every time we hit it. So we have a, like a real-time search. So this is done for the username. We have the paginate button working and the table is displaying our query data. So we can save this and finish it up and move it to done.